keeping with the Morgan theme on presenting very important research information. So. Back in the late 70s, Mark and I were uh, teammates at the University of Evansville on their, on their track team. Uh, we were distance running specialists uh, specializing in, in the steeplechase. So we spent many hours and many miles uh, training together and uh, discussing the ways of uh, improving our, our performances. And uh, so we did lots of research on, uh, on how much uh, speed and LSD to take. <laughs> For those of you novices, that's interval training and long, slow distance. <laughs> um, we also did some research on whether well, I concentrated on, on hydration. We both did. I look, looked at the best way that was light beer or regular beer, better a hydration technique, while, while Martin <laughs> concentrated on Pepsi versus Coke back, then, back at that time. But, um, but we did start having some uh, important discussions about the physiology of running. And this is kind of the physiological uh, cycle of running where you uh, runners need an intake of oxygen, which converts that oxygen then to uh, the use in the muscles, and then we release uh, carbon dioxide. Um, also in that process, um, the oxygen allows for the muscles to um, uh, release uh, glucose and sugars that also that, uh, that, that provide the energy for runners. And so. We did a lot of research into that, and uh, as you see from this graph, that as the oxygen consumption goes up, there's a, there's a high possibility that your lactic acid level will, will increase. And um, if you happen to run out of oxygen along that way, what sometimes happens is you hit the wall. That's a very technical scientific term for that. However, as we continued our research, uh, we came upon two seemingly unrelated phenomena back in the, uh, back in the late 70s. This was a time when uh, American distance running was uh, at its apex of, uh, of, um, of performance. We already had Frank Shorter winning the Olympics in 72, finishing third, second or third in the Montreal Olympics. Bill Rogers' domination at Boston and New York. Um, Alberto Salazar also. And then Mary Decker Slaney and um, Joan Benoit Samuelson, the uh, eventual winner of the first women's marathon, was just getting started at that time. So we were seeing quite a, a, an impressive uh, display of American distance running. We also noticed at that time during our training there was a plethora of flowered running shorts that people were, were wearing at the time. At first we didn't see any, any connection, but as we did more miles and more discussing of this phenomenon, we started doing some additional research and we discovered, we remembered our middle school um, science classes and started doing some research in the process of photosynthesis. As we all know that green <laughs> plants uses sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to produce the energy to grow, thereby giving off oxygen and glucose, two very important ingredient elements for, um, for distance running. So we figured that there must be a connection in the oxygen intake mechanism of those runners who were wearing flowered running shorts <laughs> and increasing the amount of oxygen in their surrounding um, surrounding, surrounding areas of the body. Now, as all great research um, has, has um, done, it's, it encountered a lot of uh, skepticism. So we did a review of the literature to see if there were other people looking into the same phenomenon. And we discovered that the great Bill Bowerman, who is most known for you know, creating running shoes in a small running company, was actually working on this same project. And as you will see, has actually got rid of the flowers and went to the all green photosynthetic <laughs> running shorts. <laughs> now, over time, American distance running did kind of go downhill and, and, um, and other countries started um, uh, taking over the, the dominance. But, even in today's, we're starting to see a resurgence of today's distance running here in the United States. And what we're seeing is that in the Oregon Track Club Elite has taken the flowered running shorts theory one step further and actually put the green photosynthetic material on the chest area much closer to the lungs, thereby <laughs> providing more direct oxygen to the areas needed. We also see this in today's race as the Boston Marathon was won by Caroline Killam, also wearing the green um, uh, singlet as well. And the, uh, the winner of the, uh, the men's Boston Marathon, who did it in record time, um, also wearing the green.
green sigma, and he even took it a step further, adding green shoes to that. As we all know, elite athletes try and get every um, advantage they can. So, what are the implications for American distance running? Well, you'll notice the, the runners uh, involved in this year's Boston Marathon, Ryan Hall finished fourth in the American, for, for the men, uh, Desiree Davilia almost won the, mar won the marathon, but you notice no green at all. Mm -hmm. she, our theory is had she had some sort of green, she might have had enough oxygen to, to maintain her read at the very last 300 meters of that. Um, of that. And of course, Kara Goucher, um, famous from here in Oregon, finished fifth in that marathon. So. <laughs> I don't know, but, I don't think there's any really cool off of the original research. We thought of running shorts at the University of Nevisville back in the late 70s. Since then, we found out that the green effect is taking place, but runners wearing green seem to perform better than those who do not. You'll notice in one of the later pictures of Mr. Stuckey's presentation, I'm wearing a yellow singlet. That's to help provide the sunshine so desperately needed by those runners wearing green. <laughs> Thanks, and happy racing. So as you see, we're still continuing to explore That's other opportunities for the green photosynthetic uh, research in terms of, uh, of uh, athletic uniforms for distance running. I don't know if I don't entertain any questions. So why were you not wearing green? I was the control group. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how does your theory play into the special abilities of, say, Green Hornet or the Green Lantern? The what? The Green oh. Hornet or the Green Lantern? <laughs> All right. How are they in, how are they affected by your theory? Well, our, our theory was predominantly based upon you know distance running athletes. Um, however, uh, for those because of the, the photosynthetic qualities of uh, you know the green horn and the green lantern, you know they can probably um, you know maintain their performance levels for much longer periods of time due to the uh, extra oxygen surrounding them. Please remove my name from <laughs> the presentation. I had no hand in determining the level of sanity. But you converted the sound quality for me, so I have to give you credit. Here.